So now that we've covered the basic flower part of angiosperms, we're going to continue our look at angiosperms by entitling the next flowchart Angiosperms 3. Now, another key characteristic that angiosperms possess that make them different than gymnosperms and make them different than other plants is the fact that they bear fruits. And this is going to be a big differentiator because it's going to, again, aid in their overall success as land plants, as we'll see when we look at the purpose of these fruits. Now, fruits are going to come as a result of a very complicated life cycle process, as we'll see when we talk about the life cycle. But just for right now, we'll summarize it as the fact that as the seed develops, so remember, angiosperms have seeds, and as the seed develops, we're going to be seeing the fact that this is going to all be happening in the ovule. So let me rewrite that. That's going to all be happening in the ovule structure. So the ovule is located within the ovary. And within that ovule structure, which is surrounded by the ovary, there is going to be ovary walls. And those ovary walls are going to thicken. When the ovary walls thicken, now you have the seed that's getting this structure around it that's starting to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Now you get the picture. This eventually is going to develop into the fruit. Develops into the fruit that surrounds what? This is all surrounding the seed. Now, why is it surrounding the seed? This is a question you should, many people ask themselves. Why is this sweet structure, this um, nectarine or you know nutritious structure surrounding seeds? This is all because this is going to be a big part in establishing a strong purpose for these fruits. Now, it's not just for the enjoyment, it's not just for the success and taste uh, needs of humans, but this is actually going to be a much broader purpose. First and foremost, the purpose of fruits is that it's a protective mechanism. Remember, we're trying to protect right now and trying to maintain something that's going to harbor the life of these plants, and that is seed. Any of the seeds that are developed after a long process of uh, angiosperm life cycle, these seeds are worthy of protection because there was a lot of energetic investment for them to get there in the first place. Lots of things had to happen for these seeds to develop. Now it makes sense to protect them with this surrounding fruit structure. In addition, fruits are going to be important because they are a specific and very great example of the fact that these land plants that have seeds have adaptations that aid in seed dispersal. Remember, we are no longer surrounded by water. This flagella, the sperm that have flagella, no longer can just move through the water and pollinate or fertilize wherever they need to be. Right now, you need something to move the seeds around. You need a me mechanism of seed dispersal. That mechanism of seed dispersal is very well illustrated when you look at fruits. Take a look at figure 30.11 to really see the following points drive home uh, in a visual understanding. Now, the adaptations that we specifically see, first of all, is the fact that wind will be present. Now, sometimes wind has the actual capability of moving fruits, but what's going to be a specific example, let's say, is the fact that, let's say, something like maple seeds. Maple seeds are going to be enclosed in fruits, and they're going to have a big role in wind, as we'll see in just a second. So they're enclosed in fruits. And because they're enclosed in fruits, the fruit actually is going to be what propels with the wind. And because the fruit, as we'll write this down, propels with the wind, what are we doing in the overall sort of larger scheme of things is the fact that we have seeds within the fruit that are going to be dispersed and that's going to be a successful adaptation to life on land for these angiosperms. The more you can disperse your seeds, the more successfully you can germinate and possibly grow those seeds, thus the more successful you will be as a plant. As we saw, angiosperms are very successful for these reasons. Furthermore, Another adaptation that's important is the fact that water may also play a role. Take, for example, coconuts. They are a good example of the fact that water plays a role in the seed dispersal as well. And so coconuts is that direct example. In addition, finally, the one that most people have a really strong understanding of is the fact that animals play a role in this idea of seed dispersal in relation to fruits. Now, animals are going to be things like you and I. Uh, many animals are specifically attracted to edible fruits. What they're getting from these fruits is nutrients. They're getting a sweet reward for obtaining these fruits. And thus, they are edible. 
Plants make sure that these fruits are edible. They don't make them poisonous because of the fact that they want animals to eat them. Now, what's the purpose of this? The purpose is the following. When the animal eats a fruit, it's going to naturally ingest, so it's going to consume, let it enter the digestive system, and also digest, so it ingests plus digests this fruit structure, the fleshy part specifically of the fruit. Now, the fleshy part of the fruit is the part that the animal enjoys, the sweet nectarine part, the part that has the nutrients within it, the part that the animal really sort of wanted in the first place. So it ingests and digests that fleshy part of the fruit. Now, upon this ingestion and digestion, what you have to focus on is, well, what's going on with the seed? The seed is located within the fruit. Now, animals are not going to specifically, let's say, remove seeds. They're going to just eat the fruit whole. And what's going to happen is the seed is going to possess, it's going to have a tough seed coat all around it. And we'll see how this develops as we move forward. But this tough seed coat is what's going to be something that actually passes quite easily, passes through the digestive tract unharmed. So through the digestive tract and when it passes through this tract, what you're having is an intact seed that is covered with this tough seed coat that is still okay, that is still alive. Now, what happens in animals? Animals move around. Animals move around better than anybody else on land. They are well adapted for terrestrial environment, but plants don't have the, let's say, luxury of ca or capability of movement. They are still, they're sessile, they can't move. So what they do is they make sure that their seeds can travel along with these animals, and as these animals are digesting the fruits, they are going to also pass through the seeds and wherever the animal ends up and whenever and wherever the animal ends up you're going to eventually have the final sort of adaptive quality with this fruit is the fact that the fruit the seed will be eliminated and when that seed is eliminated it is defecated out and that is the success that is essentially the dispersed part that we were looking for how does fruit help in the dispersal of seeds well this is exactly it you have the animal eat digest and then eventually release and that's the dispersal of the seed that's going to be a critical part that allows angiosperms to be spread out throughout the terrestrial environment of earth throughout the land that they succeed in and thus we have a combinatorial effect between the fruits that angiosperms possess and even the flowers that they possess, both of which are going to aid and attract pollinators and seed dispersers in great ways that allow for these adaptations to successfully give angiosperms a lot of upper hands in terms of their success on land as plants.